Welcome to Sabes Que. Did you know I'm your host, Jesse Ben Uh Right here on, on Usula Media, my co-host, Pablo Batista, will be back next week after he finishes some of his engagements with her. All right. So my show today is about a singer who, when I first met him, I was impressed with the fact that as a young man, he knew what type of Latin music he wanted to sing. When many of the young folks were exploring and getting away from the music, they grew up, mm -mm, not him. We had lots of students in a lot of different recitals. I attended the recitals of all my students. I felt it was like important for me to be there as the director of the school uh, to show them I am not just a director. My interest is in their development and to see how the work that the teachers were doing with the students. Not many of those recitals I can remember after all these years, but one that I can remember was the one of our guest today. He came to the recital with a big smile and his friends, uh, and when it came his turn to sing, if I'm not mistaken, he sang Guantalamera. <laughs> his singing uh, is was, hey, look, this is happening. You know, he had stage presence and he had confidence in himself. So without further ado, let me introduce our guest today, Ray Viera. Saludos, Jesse. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good, man. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited that you accepted this this interview. Um well, because, me. Yeah, well, you know, you, you, you kind, kind of like climbed up the ladder. And it's so important because you're part of the history of the city of Philadelphia, the Latin scene in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, Ray, Ray, let, let, let's let's start from uh, the the beginning. Let let us know a little bit about your background, where you were born, and where you were raised. I was born in uh, Rio Piedras in, in Puerto Rico. Um, my family was mainly in Trujillo Alto. There was some family in Gurabo, Carraizo, Pupey. Um, and I grew up down there, uh, till I was about 11 and it, it was the seventies when I was a kid and it was like, all you heard was salsa, you know, the, the, the you know, finding all stars and the Hector Lavoe days and all those, all those legends, you know? And then at 11, my father had moved to Philadelphia, uh, previously and they sent me to live with him in Philly, in North Philly. And uh, I grew up there mostly. I lived for a little bit in Jersey City. My mom was living in Jersey City, so I lived with her maybe a year or two there, but mainly in Philly uh, from, from that time. And then, you know, the rest is history. The rest is history, right? Uh, so that means that, that you, uh, you know, your interest in the music started back in the 70s when you were yes. listening to the Fania and all those folks. Yes, Man. absolutely. And, but... Now, the other thing is, well, you have become a singer. How did you know that you wanted to sing and maybe not play an instrument or whatever? Well, my family on my, my dad's side, they're all musically inclined. Like, they all can play or sing by ear. Um, mainly, but they were most, mostly in the religious side. You know, they, they sang in church and things like that. Once in a while, I would sing in church when I was a kid. Um, I guess singing was it because it was free. Like I didn't have to buy an instrument, <laughs> but really, <laughs> but really I wanted to learn how to play piano or something like that, but we didn't have the means to like buy instruments and, uh, uh, you know, take lessons when we got to Philly. So I basically would sing all the time, not even thinking that I was doing it. It was just something natural. How about that? Yeah, so th that that was your gift, and you didn't realize it at that time. Yeah, I didn't um, realize it. It took, I mean, really, uh, till I was older when I'm, people started kind of noticing that I could do it, and they would point it out before I even noticed that I could do it. You know, and it was kind of uh, accidental. Wow! Listen, I want to go back a minute because when I introduced you, I talked about your recital. Was that correct? Yes, it was. I remember that. <laughs> I remember yeah, that. You, yeah, you guys had to say Guantanamera. Yeah. yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that was something else. 
I was so nervous too. <laughs> well, I couldn't tell. You looked at pretty good on stage doing your thing, man. You know that was you know, on the outside. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and your fan club, they was like, "Yo, yo." <laughs> Ray, before your involvement on a national and international level, um, I want you to talk a little bit about your experience with the Philly musicians, because, you know, that's how you continue, began to continue to, you know, develop yourself as a singer. Yeah, absolutely. It was very important. I mean, they gave me a, uh, an opportunity to, like, kind of polish some of my, my, my ability. Um, I would have to say that um starting with uh Hector Rios uh, I got I was playing with his band he had a, a band for Che Che Bole. I don't know if you remember that band yeah I do. Uh, they I played do. mainly like Willie Colon songs and stuff like that and I, I loved it because I mean I was a big Hector Lavo fan so I would get to sing all those Hector Lavo songs and it was it was a pretty good band too he he, yeah. he had a good band and yeah. uh, also he had some say up there too right Sanseate, yes, Sanseate, I, I briefly, well, we did a demo uh, for Sanseate, uh, which never came out. It Actually, the song came out on a future uh, recording. It was added to it, but not as a Sanseate recording. But, uh, but you know, I got to tell you something. The first time I ever sang, you can say, Pacheco used to say, the first time you get paid, you're a professional. So the first time I got paid to sing, I got to tell you, it's the funniest thing. There was a small group in Philly called Sonido Saints. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. So the guy, I forget the guy, the leader, he's like, he knew that I could, I had the ability to improvise a little bit. So they called me and they said, listen, you, I want you to come and have a show in, uh, not a show, uh, a gig in, in a bar. I showed up to the bar. And there was a guy who sang the heading of the song, the beginning of it. But mm -hmm. then when the coro came in, when the coro started, that was when I jumped in. And I would just sing <laughs> the soneos. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was my first gig that I ever did. It was in, a, in some bar in, uh, in North Philly. But uh, I also played with uh, Kip Morris and Anthony Silva, Land Swing Band. That was... That was uh, uh, one of the, the first bands also, um, which I have to thank Angel Davila. I don't know if you remember Angel Davila. He's the one yes, that took he, me over there. Yeah. Angel. He was a great, great guy. You know, uh, I haven't seen him in, in years, but he was a great guy that really uh, always encouraged He's, me. He saw something in me and with, you, like, you, encouraged me. Are you talking about the horn player? No, Angel, Angel Davila da was a bass player. That oh, yes, uh, yes, 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 in, yes. Uh, yes, 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 I remember. Called Conjunto Cache. Yeah. And I met him uh, in, in, when he was playing with that band. And uh, he's the one that took me to to, to uh, Anthony Silva and, and Kip Morris to to play with that band. Well, I also played with Edgar and Anthony, you know, those guys too. So, I mean, you, you, you went around with everybody. Yeah, get a photo. I think I think I played with photo also like once or twice. Um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to remember. Oh, La Paz! I played with La Paz with mm -hmm. uh, when they were trying to uh, come out again in, the, in in at that time. I did some shows with them. Yeah, yeah but the I know when I see you performing, you play maracas and you play Guido. Uh, when did you pick that up? Did you pick it up before you went on a national level, or when did you yes. pick those two? I started, uh, yeah, in Philly, I, I started, you know, playing maracas when I would, you know, perform, and uh, the guido, it, it, came, it came easy a little bit, because I, I, I used to play guido at the family party, and this and that. Uh, all right. And then I kind of polished it, I polished it as I, as I went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because uh, un unbelievable, huh? It's it's amazing. I I've watched you grow, and I'm saying to myself, "Wow, you know." And it what I, the reason I say that is because I saw you before you took off, you know. And and at that time, I knew that you were going to do something in the world of Latin music. 
Now, Ray, uh, wow, this is what thank I thank you. I gotta thank you yeah. too because I gotta thank you too because, um, like Amla was an important thing because it, it, it gave people like me a place to go and kind of uh get involved in the music scene too. So it, it was a great place for for me to like meet other musicians and to just be part of the music community too. So it was an important thing too to be there. Yeah, many people tell me the same thing that it was a good experience. And uh I would assume that it had to be because yeah. everybody was in and out, in and out, and you never knew who you were gonna meet at at Amla and all of that. But yeah. uh, so, you know, uh, I, this is something that I've been wanting to ask you and I'm going to get the opportunity to ask you now. But uh, how did you create the uh, relationship with you and Johnny Pacheco? How did that take place? Well, there was a time where I, I had done a lot of stuff in Philly and it was during a time where... Um, you know, La Salsa Romantica was really strong. And in Philly, that seemed to be um, kind of the direction where most of the bands were going, right? And I, 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 I was going more towards a more salsa road that you could say, like, the, I guess the, the, the sound of my voice and the, what I gravitated to. So um, my mom lived in Jersey City, so I decided to go to New York since once you know I was gonna go visit her, I went to New York. I remember I went to the Copa with a cousin of mine, and at the time at the Copa to get in, you had to be dressed well. So I went dressed well, but he went dressed like he was gonna like mix cement or something like that. <laughs> 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 so so then they let him in, and I'm like, primo, but what are you gonna you know? He's like, well, no, just hang out, you know, I'll come pick you up. He never came back anyway. But anyway, I. <laughs> I go to the Copa, and guess who's playing? Johnny Pacheco. So um, I'm there, and the band was amazing. You know, watching them play uh, Hector Casanova and El Tumbao. Uh, when they finished playing, I, I, you know, I had the nerve to go up to them. And I happened to be carrying that demo that I did with Hector Rios. How about that? Because <laughs> I said, you never know who you're going to meet. So... I took one with me, and when I said I went up to him, I said, "You know, I'm a fan. You know, I love your music since I was a kid, uh, and I sing." And you know, he was like, "Oh, okay." I said, "I'm, I'm you know, here's a cassette, you know, with my number, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you." I go back to Philly, and three weeks later or so. He calls. He calls me, and I almost fell off my chair. So he <laughs> can imagine. So he goes, yeah. So he goes, uh, listen, I have a production coming up, and I would like you to, you know, do vocals in it. And I was like, absolutely, you know. So uh, months passed by. Then eventually, we did the production. When we're in the studio, we were recording in in Fania Studios on. Uh, Key Productions with Herb Greenbaum, who was engineering. And in the middle of the session, he says, I'm sorry. The, the production was for somebody else. But mm. for another band, another band. And so in the middle of the production, he goes, I'm sorry for so-and-so. I'm not for the same name. But I'm sorry for them, but you're going to come in to El Tumbao. You're going to be part of my group. So he snatched me wow. up from that production, basically, and put me in Tumbao. Wow. Yeah. And the rest is, you know, I was with him uh, ever since, pretty much, till, the, till, the, the, till he retired. Right. Well, the part that you haven't mentioned was that you fainted, right? <laughs> when he said that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, I was no, and the thing is that the, the gentleman who who owned the band kind of overheard. He was like, Maestro, go tell he said, well, what are you saying? He's like, no, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. <laughs> Wow. So, so that's why that's how that's how he put me in the in the in the group in his band. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, for the audience that may not know about Johnny Bacheco, and I don't know why they wouldn't, because he's the biggest all over the world. Uh, 
was the one of the directors of the Anya All Stars, one of the they produced some of the greatest music yeah. that, that you could even think about. They took everybody and they did a lot of things yep. with everybody. And uh, well, you and I had an experience with Johnny because Johnny came to Philly to help us put together the yeah I remember the, that. the orchestra and of course you were there and and you sang Poopy was in that yeah. orchestra and I found him yeah. to be a, a a very a very wonderful guy you know because to be that big you know what I'm saying but to be humble like that you know what I'm saying because a lot of people they get to a certain yeah. level and now they don't want to talk to you or they don't want to not Johnny Johnny right Johnny Johnny was cool. Yeah. And uh and yeah. that's 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 the other thing I wanted to ask you. Because you were so close to him. I mean, it's almost like he took you under his wing and you were his son. You know what I'm saying? So based yeah, on, yeah based on that, I can, can you talk a little bit about maybe something we we don't know about Johnny that you know, uh as him being, you know, this wonderful human being? <laughs> Yeah, he became like a father to me, you know. Uh, he mentored me uh, musically, but also, and, and, and you know, we used to hang out just uh, all the time, you know, holidays and and all kinds of stuff. And um, he was just the funniest guy ever. He was he would crack you up, you know. He was he demanded a lot from his band, but it was so much fun to play with him. Um, I would say just the funny. He was just. Hilarious. He could have been a comedian, really. <laughs> if he had, if he had cho chosen that path, he could have been a successful comedian because he was just the funniest guy. Um, like you said, very humble. He was a man of the people despite achieving all that he achieved, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was a visionary. He was a genius. He was a visionary because he would like, I mean, the whole thing with the funny also, that was his vision. Right. He saw it before it happened and he decided this is what I'm going to do. Um, it, the fact that he was able to like gather all those stars, actually discover them because a lot of them weren't stars until he discovered them and put them to record and produced them and all this stuff. And the fact that he managed to keep all those people together, it's a gift that he had to, to, to manage that kind of situation. But he was a kind person, very, uh, very good person. He would take care of his people, and and I really miss him. Yeah, well, he he definitely is a great loss to us in the in the music world. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know the whole country and parts of other parts of the world. I mean, you know, they, he went to Africa and everything. And, I mean, you know, he was just one. Well, he took it guy. worldwide. He yeah, took he took it worldwide. Took it worldwide. Like, uh, before Pacheco. You you could say it was you know uh, certain pockets of the world that this music was really thriving. Let's say New York during the Palladium era, uh, Mexico, um, certain parts of South America or, or or the Caribbean. But then with the Fania thing, I mean they took it like you said to Africa, to Europe, to Asia, and, and it became a global phenomenon. Yeah, and that's why the world listens to salsa now. Exactly. And in a lot of those places, not only do they listen to it, but they have places where you go learn how to dance it and all this kind of stuff. It's like some dance, some dance better yeah. than, than Latinos, you know. Right, they, right. They, just, they practice and they really take it seriously, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and, yeah, and I, for me, uh, when he came to Philly to work with me, I was like, oh wow, I can't believe this giant came here to Philly. To help me kind of like put an orchestra together, you know. It was he like, was a man of the people. He was yeah, a man of the people. Was, like was a, I gotta tell you this. So this is he was a real true man of the people, right? Where we would be just be finished playing, like let's say this very important show or something like that. And a lot of times we would go together if we could. So after the show, if it was just me and him. If, if Cookie wasn't there, he'd be like, let's go hang out at the cold bar. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we would go to one show and go to the cold bar. And then maybe this during the days of uh, the cold bar, when they would, they would bring two or three bands every week from like Puerto Rico, everywhere, you know. 
And mm-hmm. uh, I remember one time we went to hang out, and it was a Gran Combo. Uh, who else was there? Maybe he went to Santa Rosa. But anyway, but we're hanging out, and we're just hanging out with the Gran Combo, just having fun and a blast. He was like a man of the people. And, uh, you know, something you don't see a lot those, when people get to that level. You know, yeah, he was just a regular guy, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah, that kind of a, that kind of a person. I'll tell you what, I I am so so grateful that I had the opportunity to meet him and spend some time with him and work with him. It's it's like something that you don't even think is is going to happen because once he blew up that big, you saying, "Well, I won't I won't be able to get to this ever get to this yeah. guy," you know. Ray, let me let me ask you something there. Think what 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 was the advice that that Johnny would give you in a sense of you know the development of your career? Well, as far as singing, he would tell me uh, less is more. I remember uh, when I first started with the band. And let's say we're playing, and then you know we're doing the sonails, you know the call and response mm-hmm. part of the song. And I you know I was I wanted to say a million things. He was like. Just keep it simple. Less is more. People will, are going to group to you if you have to, you know, the, the, the swing. You don't have to say a lot of words. You could just say, you know, something, a, a phrase that fits into that space. He was very precise with that too. He didn't want someone to be all over the, uh, the yeah. song. You know, he wanted, mm-hmm. he wanted the chorus to be in his place. The sonero and, the, you know, uh, so less is more, you know, and, and if you think about it, if you listen to his recordings, very precise, very clean, you know, and uh, swinging. And it's really sometimes harder to play like that than when you play, you know, and everybody's kind of trying to <laughs> outdo, outdo each, each other. other. Yeah. yeah. But it swings more because it's precise. I think, como dicen, you know? And so, and I also think that as a singer, when you're doing that, I think that people could really hear what you're saying. Because you're not putting 20 words in there. You may be doing yeah. four or five words, and it's like, oh, yeah, I really heard that. I could relate to that. You yeah. Because a so, lot of people had the misconception of that, you know, to be a sonero, you got to see a million things. No, you, you just have to groove with the, with, with the Montuno and, and feel it and, and say something that people are going to feel and, and, and understand, you know? But what I. Uh, there's a certain thing about timing. How do how do you feel that? How do you know when to do the phrase? I mean, we listen to the music and we know, oh, yeah, the singer is coming in, or yeah, the corridor is coming in. But how do you, you know, get that correct time where you have that space, you use it, and you're gone? I think. I mean, a lot of it is. I think. Um, I think it's your soul kind of tells you, like, okay, this is this is what feels right. You know, the timing, like if you listen to each uh, sonero in the past or sing, right. they all had their own phrasing and their own timing. Uh, you know, let's say like Hector Lavoe was kind of laid back in his phrasing, but it was still in the pocket. Yeah, but he was still uh, in you the know, pocket, you, right? Yeah. Or you had somebody like uh, Maelo or Marvin who were more aggressive, but they were still in the pocket. So it depends on the on the feel of the of the singer, you know, and, and their soul. You got to go more with your soul than technicality. When you get technical, then you're disconnecting from your soul. Uh, that's, that's, that's a good point, Ray. You get disconnected from your soul. You become mechanical, right? <laughs> Versus right. that right. spiritual feeling that you need when you're executing. Wow. Yeah. Man, you know. And so you did quite a few gigs with him, with, with Pacheco, right? You... Oh, yeah. I mean, hundreds or maybe thousands. I don't know. I mean, it was, I mean, it was like almost 20 years uh, with him. So um, I can't even tell you how many, but no. it was, it was many, especially in the first decade or so when, 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 when he was still, his hope was still good. And uh, yeah. uh, we were touring a lot and traveling a lot, you know? Yeah. What an experience. So yeah. I guess uh, you did did you ever think that you were gonna get to where you got when you were no. you know like <laughs> coming up? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, it was a it was something that when it happened almost uh, was surreal. I didn't really 
know what was going to happen. I knew I wanted to make music, but I just didn't know <laughs> where I was going to end up. And when it happened, it was uh, it was really a dream for true. But you know, I, I, I in my, myself, I always think that it happened for you and, and because I think you had that desire that that is what you wanted to do. That's the music that you wanted to to sing to and uh, to yeah. get that opportunity to be with the best. Oh, man, you know, I can't even imagine what that is. And the experiences that you had, unbelievable. Yeah, well, no, you, know, you got to have the passion for it. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So listen, we're going to take a break now. Okay. All right. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more and uh, listen to a little bit of music. You know, All right. everything. Absolutely. Here with Sabe Skate, did you know? And I'm doing my interview with none other than Ray Vieta. Ray, talk. I want you to talk a little bit about because what we're going to do is we're going to play one of your songs, you know. Okay. But I want you to talk a little bit about the song and how how that particular song came about. Okay. Um, the song, so what I told uncle, it was a song that I wrote. Um. I forgot. I think it was the passing of Pico de Rodriguez, and he had passed away. I think that was what inspired the song. Um, and you know, he was. That's what he sang. Song Guaracha Guaracha. And uh, I, I, you, there's a part of the song. He said, "Porque sonero no ha muerto, vivió por siempre aquí en mi mente." And it's talking about that. You know, even though these icons pass away, the people that carry the torch, we're still here to carry that torch forward. Um, so, so basically, that's what that song was inspired by, and I wrote it. Um, I remember I, I showed it to Pacheco, we were going to make an album, but he was like, no, no, este, yo tengo otra idea. Okay. I said, all right. So I, when I was going to do my own uh, recording, I, I put it in there, so and it worked out with it. Yeah, and uh, that, that, that the the Wawanko scenario, he was the master of that, though, when, you know, when he sang. That was his, that was his thing, you know? And yeah, for you he, to to uh, uh, record something like that, I think it, it, it was great. It was a great tribute to him. But also in the midst of this conversation, you also have mentioned that you write. And I haven't told the folks that you do write. And uh, you've written quite a few uh songs for your for your albums right yeah most most um uh, bo both albums and even the the one prior that that uh i had done I, I wrote three on that one on on the following solo album i did i wrote nine out of ten and then the the one that comes after i wrote all the songs so i, I you know i was it's funny because i write songs and um other people ask me for songs you know other artists sometimes and I show them that song, right? They listen to it. No, no es lo que estoy buscando. It's not what I'm looking for. I say, okay. And then I come and record it. And then they go, how come you didn't give me that song? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, I showed it to you. You don't remember? <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. let's let's see a little bit of that Guaguanco song that you that you've recorded. Okay. So the people get a chance to hear your energy. All right.
olvidó Porque el sonero no conoció la muerte Vivió por siempre aquí en mi mente Y llegó al cielo, siguió soñando con ángeles que tocan Wow, I want uh, I wanted to keep listening to that. It was I was grooving <laughs> with that, man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, man. Nice, nice groove, man. Uh, d- tell me how many how many albums have you already recorded? I mean, you um, know, there's two things: the ones you recorded with somebody else, and then yours. On my own, uh, I've, I've done three solo albums. One which was produced by um, executive produced by Victor Adai, which was the first solo album I did. Victor Adai, mm-hmm. and my compai from yeah, La Paz. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. it was a it was a uh, a solo production um, that I did back like in, about twenty some years ago, about twenty years ago. Uh, and then uh, there's two two other albums that I did solo, uh, Trombao, which is but that song is from that album in uh, Sambumbia Radio Activa. And then as far as lead singing, I did about let's lead singing with like five or six other albums from for different people, you know, Pacheco, mm-hmm. uh, Ricky Gonzalez, um, Chino Nunez, Giovanni Diaz. Uh, there's several others I can't remember, but, um, but I've done that. And then as far as being involved in the production, I've done, I've, I've been involved somehow in a, about close to 30 productions um, um, in some way or another, whether it's in, in Goro, some form or, or another, right? Goro yeah, Goro or, or, or writing or something or lead wow. or something like that. Well, yeah. you know, uh, Ray, uh, there's some pictures that I want the engineer to put up one at a time. And what I'd like for you to do is when you see that picture, give us a little bit of the excitement that was happening or what was going on in that when that picture was taken. Oh, okay. All right, tell me about that picture, Ray. Well, that was, um, I did some shows for uh, the Lincoln Jazz Center. And I was singing, uh, they did a, like a, uh, a show uh, dedicated to Pito Puente and Busy Gillespie. And uh, Winston Marsalis' band was the band playing. So, you know, he played trumpet too uh, on the show. And I did about, I forgot how many shows it was with them, uh, singing some of the Tito Puente stuff, some of the Santitos Colón uh, mm. songs that were recorded with Tito Puente. But that was great, you know, great, some great shows that we did. Where, where, where did those shows take place? Were they? Uh, at, at the Lincoln Center at in the Lincoln New York Center? City. Yeah, they have a, a, a link, the Lincoln Jazz uh, uh, shows that they do there. So I did about a week of shows. I forgot how many shows it was um, with, with that band. Yeah, that, that, was, that was an exciting experience for you, I could gather. Yeah, because it was, a, it was like a 25-piece band. It was, I mean, it's huge. So mm-hmm. the, the sound, I mean, you thought you, were, you, you thought you were in West Side Story or something. <laughs> it was a big sound, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was amazing. It was like a, a movie soundtrack or something. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. All right. Let's let's go to the next picture because you got so much so much stuff happening. Oh, here we go. <laughs> that's with uh, defining all stars, and that's when uh, ASCAP um, 
gave a, like a lifetime award to to Pacheco. So uh, I was there with uh, the rest of the final author. You can see Ruben Blades, uh, Miranda, you can see, and Victor Manor was there as a guest. Um, Harlo, Boy Valentin, Nicky Marrero, uh, and Montalvo. And I, I um, sang Mi Gente for Pacheco in that show. Since it's, he was uh, there to be dedicated, to be honored as a songwriter. So that's, that's from that, that moment, that picture. <laughs> Was that Larry Harlow on the keyboard or what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was, All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, listen, let's go to the next shot. We get a little bit more different stories here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't this right here is with Palmieri. With Palmieri, uh, we're performing, I think, in Colombia or Venezuela. I can't remember. Uh, so we're performing there um, in a huge festival, I think in Maracay, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we, we had a blast. You can see little Johnny Rivero there and Nelson Gonzalez down yeah. at the end. Yeah. You can see also uh, Jose Clausel on the timbales. And Palmieri maybe told me, I don't know if you see him in the back, he's sitting down. In, the, in piano. the piano. Yeah. Yeah, between uh, me and uh, Clausel somewhere. <laughs> wow. So you, you went around a little bit with Eddie Palmieri too, right? Yeah, we traveled. Uh, you know, Europe, South America, in the, in the States. Uh, I was with him for a few years, you know. We worked together also. I did also uh, a couple of the albums he did. I was part of them uh, back in the early 2000s. Wow. Great experience. Great experience. Yeah, it was. It was. I had a blast. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the next photograph and talk a little bit about that one. Oh, oh, that's, that's another one. That was during the time with Eddie. Uh, you can see Brian Lynch, the jazz uh, trumpet player, um, and uh, Doug Beavers right there. Ivan Renta was a great saxophonist, jazz saxophonist. We were performing with Palmieri and touring and stuff like that. What, what was the difference between, you know, uh, performing with a Palmieri and performing with Pacheco in the sense of the, the musical uh, you know, vibe. Style. How did that work? Well, uh, with Pacheco, it was all about pre precision and everybody in their place. With Palmieri, it was a little more free. You know, it's a little more experimental. Um, you still got to play right, but it was, he gave a little more leeway to some his soloists and people to uh, to um, express, you know, and solo and, and perform. So it was a it was a different style, you know. Pacheco was precise, clean. Palmieri is a little more free and more open, as far as the the way to play. And I guess that's because of his uh, uh, relationship with jazz, Latin yeah, jazz. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, he was. I mean, even though they both played jazz, if you think about it, Pacheco played a lot of jazz records. He was a percussionist before he mm. played flute. Right, so he used to right. play a lot of. Uh, percussion and uh, jazz records but Palmieri came more from you know I guess you know he was involved and he was a big follower of jazz too he's a big fan of Thelonious Monk and all those people so he brought that kind of vibe into salsa if you think about it wow and interesting yeah and we got another shot here now Uh oh, okay, that's it, it looks Jacob. like you're on a roll on this one, man. Yeah, Tao Inspirado. Tao Inspirado. Ahí. <laughs> we, were, we were jamming there. We were playing with Pacheco. I think that was a Manhattan Center in New York. You can see Ruben Rodriguez on the bass right there. And, uh, and the yeah, famous. Yeah, you got the. You got the uh, <laughs> yeah. Be, be blessed by that great bass player. Yeah, and Jorge Gonzalez is a great percussionist, played with Pacheco for years. Yeah, Ray, let's talk a little bit about this because uh, I see Pacheco in the front. I yeah. see you doing your thing. Yeah. And what song was happening there that everybody was so into the groove? Um, I'm not sure. It might have been Sonero. I don't know why I think it's Sonero, but I, it might have been Sonero. Um. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what song it was. You're not sure. That was a moment, right? 
yeah, it was a moment, you know, I, I, my wife used to make fun of me because she said when I start singing, I feel like I'm, I look like I'm possessed. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of lose myself. So I, I guess that's what was happening there. I kind of lost myself there. <laughs> mm, wow. And I think he's queuing in the mambo or the moña. You can see him doing the, <laughs> he's queuing in the, the brass to come in. Let, let's uh, go for another one, Ray, another photo. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I see some oh, folks okay. there. Yeah, you can see um, the late great Mike Quintana, you know, legendary singer that did all those uh, hits with Palmieri, and uh, also Alberto Santiago, tremendo cantante, and the great, the late great Yomo Toro. Uh, this is the, I think I was touring with the Fania All Stars at that time, and that's like we're backstage just hanging out <laughs> and cracking jokes and stuff like that. And um, someone took a picture. So, well, you know, so that's from that. <laughs> well, how did it feel to be sitting next to Alberto like that? You just get that guy is like, ooh, unbelievable Alberto's singer. Alberto's really a great singer, but very uh, approachable, you know. So he was always really cool and uh, from the beginning. And also in Mike Quintana, real humble. Yomo was always humble. And, and they yeah. all treated me, even though I was the new guy, you know, they always treated me you know, with, uh, con mucho cariño, you know, and me, me trataron bien. They always treated me good. Yeah, and I, I often think that the the older guys and so forth like that, when they see a young person that has a certain amount of talent, then the, in their mind, they probably saying, hey, <laughs> we got somebody else that's going to follow, that's going to, you know, uh, yeah. contribute well, to the music. That's the only way this music can survive if we, we got to uh, bring in the youth and nurture them and guide them. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, there, there, there was probably, you know, some occasions where some people were not as open to the youth. And then, then they don't realize if they do that, they're hurting themselves because if you don't have fans coming in and people and new blood and the, the youth bringing in that energy, then the music and the genre are going to hurt, you know, down the, down the line. Well, you know, this is why I think that uh, Amla was real instrumental because that that kind of an energy was there, and a lot of young people came through there and 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 did a lot of things. And I I believe that that kind of situation needs to continue wherever yeah. it can happen. It needs to continue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, absolutely. If salsa is going to continue to grow and to um, to expand as a genre. We need the youth to come in and we need to encourage them and teach them and uh, guide them, give them advice and, 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 and you know, uh, constructive criticism, not just shut them out, not just say, no, you, you don't have it. No, and say, OK, you you have this. So work on this and work on that and just encourage them so they can keep growing. And you never know. You might have someone that's going to make an impact in the future. Yeah, like a Ray Rieta? <laughs> <laughs> well, I try, I try. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, I think we have one more picture. Oh, no, wait a minute. Okay, no. We got more than uh, one picture. A, well, it's a show with, 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 with con el Maestro Pacheco, and uh, I don't know what we're singing here, but we're singing something together. Um, You know, a lot of good memories with with that band and, and with him. And uh, it was really always fun. And I think that energy used to be, used to transmit on stage to the public. You know what I mean? Um, which is something that sometimes you don't see in all the bands. Sometimes, you know, some bands you can see a little more attention, but with this band, it was always fun. And uh, it, would, it, would, it would come out in the, in the way we played. Well, you know, the, the other thing that I, knew knew about Bacheco was that he was an entertainer you know some people are musicians and band leaders and, but he's also an entertainer when yeah. he came out there you know to do his thing man he entertained yeah. the people and the people wanted that I mean you know the people could feel that that energy you know so uh, yeah and he knew how yeah. to talk to the public and Get right. them engaged and all that stuff too. And crack those jokes, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, God bless his soul. May he rest in peace.
Amen. We got another f- picture coming up, right? Oh, this is with the late, great Hector Casanova, who we shared the stage for many, many years. I learned a lot from him. You know, he was old school Cuban, Sorero. And, um, you know, who's been playing with Palmieri for, for a long time also. Great Sonero. I learned a lot from him also. Um, I think we were doing a concert in New York at that time. And uh, I guess I was singing. They were just staring at me. <laughs> okay. We're coming up to the last picture. And this is, I don't know. This is, this is a great, great, great photograph. Yeah, that's with the late, great uh, Celia Cruz um, and the late Pacheco also. Uh, I don't remember exactly where that was, but we did so many shows with Celia. Um, we would do tours all over the world with her sometimes. So um, someone sent me that picture. I didn't even know it existed. I think it's in a book. And they took the picture from the book. <laughs> Some book they did about Celia. Um but she was awesome, bien, very humble and loving, bien cariñosa también. Um, and we always have fun playing with her wherever we went. Yeah, she's that high energy. And uh, you yeah. performed with her more than one time, right? You performed with her a yeah, few we, times, right? Yeah, we used to do tours. We used to go to, I went to Europe with her. Uh, we went to Mexico with her, all over the States. We did shows with her. Um, and she was always get get the crowd going, you know. Well, yeah, with Asuka, right? To her, her, she would say yeah. Asuka, the the public would explode. Yeah, yeah, she had that magnetic uh, energy that would get people uh, going. Yeah, it's uh, I, you know, my presence around her. When I was around her, I I kind of like felt that she had this aura, an aura around her. Something that was like, you know, everybody don't have that or, you know. Yeah, but yeah. To, to me, it was like an experience. I've never been around somebody like that, that, that you know, that had whatever, whatever it was. But it was great. I mean, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, wow. You know? She had magnetism. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she definitely did. And uh, Ray, is there anything that you would like to tell the folks out there before we... Uh, have to wrap it up. Well, Any- no, I just want to thank you, you know, for having me, you know, and uh, I remember you fondly, you know, with all the things you did and I'm glad for people like me and uh, all my people in Philly, you know, the people that I play with, you know, uh, that were always uh, it, a lot of good memories, you know, uh, you know, Hector Rios, Victor Agai, Kip, Edgar, um, you know, Anthony Colon también, uh, so many people that I can't even thank enough, you know, and, um, well, thank times. you. Thank you so much for all those kind words and thank you for being part of Sabes Que Did You Know here on Usula Media. Ray, lots of luck. Continue to do your thing and, uh, say, stay safe. Okay. We right, love you here at Usula Media. Sabes que did you know I'm your host? Thank Jesse Bermudez. Hasta la próxima. <laughs>